free kebab for every Jap. This Berlin initiative was just one of 1,500 campaigns in Germany's Vaccination Action Week last week. The result? 500,000 people were vaccinated for the first time with a free jab at mosques, supermarkets and football pitches. But is that enough? Just one in six people in the over 60s risk group has been vaccinated. If a highly contagious Delta variant starts to spread among those most vulnerable, Germany's intensive care units could be under serious pressure. Welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Jones from Berlin. Good to have you with us. And it's mind-boggling, isn't it? 19 months into the pandemic, with millions of COVID-19 deaths around the world, and people in wealthy nations like Germany still hesitate to get vaccinated. Just about 63% of the country's population is immunized. Too little, say experts. Now, the government tries to change that with a carrot and stick approach. Getting the shot during your lunch break, without appointment and free of charge. This little stall in Berlin Kreuzberg is part of a special week long drive in Germany. The idea to make it as easy as possible to get vaccinated. The organizers say it's working. We've had over 80s who received their third vaccinations, various people getting their first vaccinations, so a mixture of people who really decided spontaneously while shopping and people who came here after hearing about it in the media. All over Germany, health workers are trying to reach people who have yet to get a shot, as the country's vaccination campaign sputters. Germany wants 75% of the population to be immunized against the coronavirus heading into the fall to prevent a deadly surge of infections. So far, only just over 62% have received the necessary shots. German President Frank-Walter Steinmeier has also stepped in to do some convincing. Now it's important to tell people again, it's not just about you. When you decide against vaccination, you're not only deciding against yourself and risking your own health, you are also risking the health of others. Most COVID-19 patients in intensive care in Germany are now unvaccinated. The government has stressed time and again that it's not planning on making vaccinations mandatory. But several of Germany's 16 states have started restricting access to certain venues for people who haven't received their shots. That's a persuasive reason for some to get the jab, like here in Munich. I'm fed up with these restrictions, always having to be tested and all that. And for him, there's even a reward waiting, a ride on the Ferris wheel. Well, Germany has a population of about 80 million. How many shots were given so far? Well, in its latest report, Germany's Robert Koch Institute counts 105,667,332 COVID vaccine doses administered. That was until Sunday. Well, I was at the doctors today and uh, there were quite a few people waiting to get vaccinated there. So the number is rising, albeit slowly. Too slowly, perhaps? Let's ask uh, Professor Gernot Marx. He's the president of the German Interdisciplinary Association of Critical Care and Emergency Medicine at the University Clinic in Aachen. Good to have you with us, uh, Professor. And perhaps let's start by, please, uh, if you could remind us again, what percentage of the population needs to be immunized to keep the virus at least under control so we can get back to a normal life? Well, it is really true that uh, every citizen who is uh, vaccinated more is, uh, is, is, uh, is positive. So, I mean, we are in the moment uh, fully vaccinated by 63%. Uh, and uh, we are aiming at least uh, towards 75. I mean, 85 would be even better. But uh, let's say 10% more would mean that more people are protected and less people uh, getting sick or even to the ICU. So what do you make of uh, last week's uh, vaccination action week? Uh, 500,000 more people got vaccinated, but that's not enough, is it? This is true. This is not enough. But on the other hand side, 500,000 citizens more vaccinated is, uh, is wonderful. Uh, we need really to be uh, persuasive and convincing people and getting them better informed and invite them to to get vaccinated for themselves and, and for, for the society. 
and um, then uh, we really need to inform. I think many people still haven't understood how dangerous uh, a COVID-19 disease really uh, could be for, for everybody. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned something there because uh, uh, many anti-vaxxers believe that it's actually safer to get infected with SARS-CoV-2, safer than to get vaccinated. Is there a medical argument to sustain that belief? Well, this is definitely not true from the scientific point of view. First of all, let's start with the intensive care environment. In the first two waves, uh, more than 50% of our, our patients who we need to ventilate died in Germany. And uh, in the third wave, we had about uh, 40%. So this is really a, a deadly disease when it comes to the, the severest forms, uh, when, when people need us as intensivists. So uh, it's really uh, dangerous for your own life when you're not vaccinated. And, 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 and in addition, what we see in many patients, even in those who have not really uh, um, many symptoms when they're acutely ill with uh, the coronavirus, they are having the potential of developing long COVID syndrome. And uh, this is uh, having fatigue and having neurologic symptoms. So it is, it is really um, a disease nobody wants to have. And it's definitely uh, when you weigh the risk and benefit of a vaccination against the coronavirus, uh, from the scientific point of view, from the intensivist point of view, the benefits are outweighing the risks at all. And of course, all of those things, the fact that millions of people died around the world already, that you can get seriously ill, and even if you're not, you could suffer from long COVID, and we don't even know all the symptoms yet. All of that is known, yet people are still hesitant. Now, looking at the current situation in hospitals, especially ICUs and the current vaccination rate in Germany, what's in store for us this autumn and winter? Well, this is a difficult question. In the moment, we have just about 1,500 ICU patients. Uh, this is a, a situation we can handle, but it's still, if you think we have more than 90% non-vaccinated patients, so uh, it could be far less. And uh, we, um, we know from last year that there is a seasonal effect of the coronavirus. And therefore, we do expect that when people are getting more and more into their rooms and the, to their homes, uh, that the, um, there's a risk that we have an increase in the infection rate and the incidence and hence, excuse me, in the end also in, in the rate of um, patients who we need to care for on mm. ICUs. So we, we expect really more patients in the winter time. All right, Professor Gernot Marx from the University Clinic in Aachen. Uh, thank you so much and uh, yourself, stay healthy. Thank you ever so much, yourself. And time for more of your questions now. And uh, here to answer them is our science correspondent, Derek Williams. What makes a pandemic a pandemic? COVID-19 is one, but the flu apparently isn't. Why? This is pretty confusing, I admit. So, so maybe it's best to start with some basic definitions. Um, the first term, used in connection with the appearance of a disease, uh, whether it's caused by a, a novel pathogen or by a pathogen we've seen before, is outbreak, uh, which is kind of a catch-all description for any sudden rise in the number of cases. Outbreaks can happen in a particular geographic region, but they can also cross international borders. Um, they can occur unexpectedly or, or, or intermittently, like, for example, Ebola outbreaks in parts of sub-Saharan Africa, or they can be regular occurrences, like uh, seasonal outbreaks of flu. An epidemic, on the other hand, describes the situation when an outbreak expands and the disease begins spreading quickly to a large number of people, um, both within individual countries and across international borders. Um, the SARS epidemic of 2002 and 2003, which was eventually contained after killing hundreds of people, is often cited as an example of an epidemic. A pandemic 
is what an epidemic turns into when it spins out of control, and infecting an even larger number of people at, at an expanding rate and hitting populations globally, uh, ratcheting up the number of deaths in, in a big way. Um, often that kind of wildfire spread occurs because the pathogen is a new one or is, is maybe one that's reappeared suddenly after a long hiatus. Um, so most people have never been exposed to it before and, and have no immunity. Um, flu pandemics do occur regularly. Just think of the one that killed between 50 and 100 million people worldwide over a three year period after the end of the First World War. Um, however, that was caused by a novel flu virus that was quite different than the flu viruses circulating in populations at the time, causing normal levels of endemic flu. Um, those endemic flu bugs also cause disease, of course, and, and they also kill people, but mostly seasonally in different parts of the world and, and in relatively predictable numbers, which is what distinguishes them in epidemiological terms from, for instance, a pandemic causing pathogen uh, like SARS-CoV-2. And just briefly to Indonesia, where a 40-year-old counselor is dressing up as a superhero called Isoman to give children in self-isolation some relief from pandemic sadness and boredom. Egos with Danarko slides into a Spider-Man costume, pulls on a mask to, uh, to give hope to kids uh, uh, a psychological lift in uh, central Java province. That's all. Thanks for watching.